Yeah, thank you. Um, so, shall I take? Okay. Hello, everybody. So, thank you for joining the session. Uh, my name is Uma Maheshwari, and I work at Syncfusion as one of the product managers handling few of the web UI components. So uh, in this session, uh, today we are going to see how to create a fitness tracker app uh, with micro front-end architecture by making use of Webpack's uh, module federation plugin. So let me share my screen. So I hope you are able to see the screen now. OK. As I said, the basic agenda of this uh, workshop today is uh, we'll see how to create that app using React-based micro frontends, as well as we'll see how to pass the data between each micro frontend and how to handle the state between them. And also, at last, we'll see how to pass the data between cross-platform micro frontends. Uh, that is, we are going to create a, um, a Angular app and also React app, and we'll see how to communicate between them as well. Uh, so this is the uh, agenda we are going to cover in this session. So first, let's have a look at the application overview, what we are going to build right now. So this is the fitness tracker app. Uh, so you can use it to track your daily activities as well as your diet. So this is what we are going to build. Uh, it is uh, out of scope to build the entire thing in this uh, single session. So. What I have planned is we are going to take two modules from this, and uh, we are going to build it and integrate it uh, into a single application. Uh, in the later part, I'll tell you the steps how to do that. But uh, the basic overview is you can ha see the activities page here, which displays four cards about the heart rate, steps, calories, and the sleep hours of the present day, I mean the current day. And you can also have a look at the chart component and at the bottom, you can see the grid component. So all these components are um, uh, Syncfusion React components. So we are going to build this application completely with our uh, Syncfusion React components. And uh, this is uh, at the right side, you can have a look at this uh, profile details. Uh, so this is one uh, separate micro front end, which, uh, which we are going to create. And here you can see the profile details as well as the journal, that is the activities um, of the diet as well as uh, what uh, kind of uh, workouts they have done in a day. And if I move on to the diet page, here you can see the meals uh, intake details as well as the cal calories burnt and uh, consumed in a day uh, that is displayed in another chart. And if I move on to the fasting tag, so uh, I just forgot to mention one thing that this particular application is entirely placed inside a tab component. So the three items which you are uh, seeing at the top, activities, diet, and fasting, are nothing but three tab items. So inside these three tab, tab items, we are uh, designing uh, the UI uh, layout uh, separately. So in the fasting tag, you can uh, see, uh, I mean, in the fasting tab, you can see uh, the fasting details as well as the water, water intake details and so on. Uh, all right, so now uh, in this session, so basically what we are going to build is we are going to have a host application uh, uh, which contains a tab component with this three tab items. So first it will be empty and the active, we are going to create uh, a micro front end uh, with the name activities project. So that activities project will include uh, this section that is my activities, activity statistics, as well as the uh, recent workout uh, details. So, uh, and at the right side, I have said the 
about the profile application so i mean the profile section and this section we are going to create it as a separate application so there will be two micro front ends one is activities and profile and we are going to place these two applications into uh, the host application uh, so in the same way we you can uh, design for other tab items as well so this is all about the application overview and so first before uh, uh, we we'll look at what is micro front end as i said uh, uh, at the present days uh, the applications are uh, growing uh, growing in size so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to split the huge projects um, into number of smaller parts and we are going to assign them to individual teams so basic idea is we are uh, assigning them to individual teams and they'll be uh, working uh, at uh, at them independently and they can build and uh, deploy it uh, independently and at the end they can uh, make it into an integral uh, single solution so micro front end is splitting up the project into smaller parts that's how the uh, basic idea and uh, why we need to go with this uh, micro front end is um, as i said because of the smaller uh, application it is easy to maintenance each team can handle their own uh, uh, uh projects independently so it is easy to develop uh, as well as we are splitting the uh, features into individual projects and also the development can happen in a parallel way and you can deploy them independently as well as you can use uh, different frameworks for the mul uh, micro i mean micro front ends as i said there can be n number of micro front ends and each micro front end can be developed in different frameworks like you can develop one application in react and another in angular like that and you can also easily uh, uh, handle the scale the i mean scale the code uh, easily because uh, uh, because of the um, maintenance uh, thing made easier and you can also easy easy to test it as well so this these are the main reasons why we go with micro front end and so how how can we implement uh, micro front end uh, previously uh, we uh, i mean implementing micro front end is a little bit tedious thing uh, but now there are uh, a few more i mean there are uh, popular plugins as well as frameworks to make this work easier so these are some of the uh, some of the popular uh, frameworks or plugin uh, that can be used to create the micro front end uh, applications so in this workshop uh, we are going to create the micro front end by making use of uh, the module federation plugin which is uh, which comes as the uh, integral part of uh, webpack uh, webpack uh, version 5 okay so so now what is module federation so that uh, you can create micro front end with any of the um, uh, plugins or libraries so module federation so uh, the base um, how we are going to integrate them into a single solution as i said micro front end is a collection of uh, uh, smaller projects and, um, and uh, multiple smaller projects so this module federation will help us to integrate them into a single solution we are going to load all the micro front ends into the single application at, at the runtime uh, so this is uh, uh, so that is why we uh, we are uh, that is how the module federation is going to help us uh, ba basically it has two roles that is host and remote so if you take the uh, uh, host it is nothing but the container application uh, where all the uh, remote is nothing but any number of micro front ends. So the host will reference those uh, remote applications uh, by um, accessing its uh, unique conf configuration name. So each remote can has its own unique uh, name at the webpack configuration file using which we can load them into the host application. So at the initial time, the host application will not uh, know uh, what that um, uh, name is uh, at the time of compilation. It will not know what that uh, name actually and only when we run uh, it will dynamically load the remote because the remote is nothing but the already uh, built uh, application so built and deployed independently so it will just simply loads it into the host application uh, there is a remote entry file uh, 
which will be available in all the micro frontend application uh, it's a it's a kind of minimal javascript file that acts as a um, uh, entry point uh, i mean entry point to access the bundles uh, created for that remote application so using that the host application will be uh, uh, loading them so uh, this is how uh, it works uh, so if we have uh, a single host application and a single micro front end so say you can see in the exposes i mean micro front end is trying to expose a single component that is my cmp.ts file uh, so it is exposing that component in the allies name cmp and now the host is trying to access that uh, i mean load that micro front end and so it is accessing it in the remote object by uh, accessing uh, it in with a unique name and inside the host application whenever you want to import it in any of the files you can do it like uh, in this way uh, by accessing the uh, remote uh, name mfe1 slash cmp uh, 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 that is which is exposed in that micro front end okay so uh, that's what the module federation is about and why we need module federation is you can use it to uh, it it provides a very easier uh, it provides better way to share the code uh, like uh, making by making use of the exposes and the remote subject you can easily do that and it is environment uh, independent as i said you can um, easily communicate with any of the frameworks like uh, the one created with uh, react and another create another application created in angular so uh, this is why we go with module federation all right so now let's move on to the application creation process so before that i'll share a, a, a document um okay uh so i'd like to um uh, convey that uh, one of our uh, michael michael has joined uh, in that meeting so in this workshop and if you have any q and a in between you can ask him in the chat section so i hope all have received this uh, document uh, at your side and so you can see the uh, diagram over here. So this is what we are going to have. First, we are going to create a host application. Uh, so that application will con uh, where we are going to place our tab component and uh, contain. Uh, it will have three uh, tab items, and then we'll create a separate activities application, profile application, and there is a store application where we'll maintain the data for this entire application. Um, all right so just make sure uh, you have all these prerequisites and i believe that uh, everybody is having the uh, react uh, working uh, i mean with the supported versions in your system uh, so some of the uh, downloadable asserts uh, i have given here this this uh, these folders uh, i mean these files we need to refer it in uh, uh, applications uh, to make the work easier all right so now let me open the VS code and start with the application creation process. So first we'll see the simple thing, uh, how to create, a, sorry, just, uh, just create a new workspace. Let me create a React challenge. All right, so first we'll uh, see how to create a host application. And uh, second, uh, next we'll see how to create uh, a one micro front end application. And we'll try to load that micro front end application into the host. So first let's create uh, the host application. Uh, open that, let me open the terminal and I'll make use of the command create MF app, so npx create MF app. So I hope uh, uh, it will be good if, if you can um, code along with me. 
and you can also make use of the code uh, uh, that I have shared in the document. So type npx create mfapp code and then if you are uh, using this create mfapp for the first time it will ask whether uh, you are okay to create so, so just provide yes and i'm going to name my application as host app and project type as application and leave it the port uh, number as 8080 that is fine and choose react framework javascript language i'm going to use and css is fine now change your directory directory to the newly created uh, host app folder now just install the initial scripts npm install so let the react uh, and react dom libraries get uh, installed packages so in the meantime let's uh, create uh, our another uh, micro front end application so open the uh, one more terminal and just uh, uh, create the next uh, application npx create mfapp okay so this is my micro front end application one and for this application i'm going to uh, name it as activities app okay so this activities app uh, is going to be an application project type. And for this application, I'm going to set the pro, uh, port number as uh, 3001. And I'm going to choose the React framework and JavaScript language, CSS. So now change the directory to activities app. OK. so. Let me start with the npm install to install the required packages, the initial packages. OK, let it get installed. And now we'll move on to uh, the host application. So all the packages uh, got installed in the npm, uh, sorry, host application. So let's run this uh, host application with the command npm start. So this host application is the acts as the container application. So you can see the name over here. And now moving back to the micro front end uh, application activities app. Now let's start uh, running this with the command npm start. OK. So we have uh, two projects running. Uh, one is host, and this activities app is the remote application, micro front end application. Now we'll see um, how to uh, load this activities application into the uh, into this host application. So the first thing I need to do is inside this activities app, I'll open the webpack configuration file. So open this okay just a moment so Okay, 
so i hope you are able to follow up with me and but if you if you are not able to follow up you can uh, uh tell me about that in the chat window so so okay now we are going to uh, load this activities app into the host app for that open the activities app uh, webpack configuration file and inside this exposes uh, object i'm going to expose okay so before i expose this uh, let me create a simple uh, activities js file so some we'll add some content uh, into it so inside this src folder i'll create activities.js and here i'll import react from react and export default function i'll create activities so i'll create and call it inside the app jsx okay so inside the return statement i'm going to just write a div with a hello from activities page Okay, so let me call this inside the app.jsx. So I import activities from activities JS file, and let me call this activities inside. So just I uh, just remove this container uh, content, and here I'll place activities. okay so let's have a look at the uh, activities content right now so you are able to see this uh, hello from activities page content uh, now let's display this message into the host app application so now i'll expose uh, this activities uh, component into uh, to the host application for that i'll open webpack configuration file inside this activities app project and inside this exposes object i'm going to expose this activities dot uh, activities component so for that uh, let me type in i'm going to provide some allies name here uh, so i'll give activities and next i need to provide the path to access that activities.js file uh, it is not necessary to provide the JS extension. So just uh, I'm accessing this activities JS in the name activities here. So save this. Okay, so now uh, I have exposed this. Next, I need to uh, imp uh, next I need to access this inside the host application. Uh, give me a minute, just a minute. Okay, so uh, I think uh, so. I just wanted to confirm that whether you are able to uh, follow up with this. So, if you can uh, let me know in the chat, uh, then I can proceed uh, for the uh, with the further steps. 
so are you all uh, uh, done uh, with this activities app displaying the content okay okay so once uh okay now let me proceed and uh, tell you how to uh, access this activities app so inside this uh, host app application open the webpack configuration file and here i need to access that uh, activities app inside this remote section okay so okay in the remote section i'm going to give a name activities and here i'm going to call the um, uh, link of uh, the remote entry file in the activities web uh, activities app project so here you can see inside the web pack you are able to see this uh, unique name given to the activities app project so i'm going to uh, use this name inside the host app web pack configuration so activities app at and then you need to provide the uh, local host link so you uh, you don't need to worry about the steps i'll just explain you what are the steps uh, to follow uh, once again so uh, inside the activities app you can see the path of this project in the webpack configuration so i'm going to uh, use this local host uh, 3001 uh, inside the host app uh, project here and then i need to provide the remote entry.js uh, file so let me explain what are the steps we have done so far so so that uh, i think you all be, you all will be able to uh, catch up with that so first we have created a host application and uh, just we have displayed um, two separate contents in the host and activities app now what we have done is in activities app i have created a activities.js file uh, with some uh, content uh, to display so i will uh, i have just displayed uh, returned a div element with hello from activities page and i'm just calling this activities uh, uh, component inside the app.jsx uh, of the of the same project so to access that i'm just importing that activities function from the activities.js file and here i have just uh, add added the tag inside app function so that's all uh, we have done with the activities uh, project to display that uh, content and then uh, to uh, to expose this activities component to the host application i opened the webpack configuration file of activities project and here uh, you need to uh, pro expose this with the help of exposes object okay so inside the exposes object uh, dot slash activities is uh, you can give any name over here uh, but here you need to pass the exact path uh, which i have uh, i mean i'm going to access this activities js file inside this src folder so i have exposed this component in the name of activities so that's all the configuration that uh, you need to do in this activities app then move on to the uh, then moving on to the host application webpack configuration file now 
I have accessed this activities. Uh, uh, now uh, you need to access that activities uh, project. So for that, I'm providing a name over here. You can provide any name over here uh, for this. But here at the right hand side, you can see the activities app at localhost 3001 remote entry.js so you need to provide this activities app by um, seeing through uh, by uh, uh, looking at the webpack config of activities project so here you can see the unique name uh, that uh, it is initially generated uh, at the time of application creation so i need to use this name uh, over here so webpack configuration and one more thing the localhost number is uh, where the activities app is currently running so uh, 3001 it is where the activities app is uh, running at that port and i need to access that remote entry file of that particular uh, uh, pro project that runs at the localhost 3001 so what happens is the activities project will get uh, deployed uh, independently and uh, bundled up separately and when i uh, take that into uh, when when i refer it remotely here uh, only the uh, deployed application it just loads that uh, executed application into this host container so uh, now we have accessed it in the remote section now let's see how to uh, use that component inside the uh, host application. So I hope uh, you are able to uh, understand that right now. With the activities app, it returns the uh, content that we have created right now. Uh, host application, there is no change in the content. Uh, we need to uh, do the changes uh, to, I, I mean, we need to call this activities uh, into that uh, host app right now. So for that, I'll go, I'll open app.jsx in host application. So I, to avoid confusion, I just open the host app application, uh, SRC folder and app.jsx. So here you can see the host app content. So I just uh, remove that. Here I'm going to place that uh, content from activities page. So are you able to uh, un, uh, follow up uh, tell what we have seen. Okay, okay, fine. Thank you. So now let's uh, import that activities project here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll define a constant uh, variable with the name activities. And here I'm going to lazy load that uh, act, uh, from, uh, I mean, imp I'm going to import that activities in the uh, lazy load function. So react, sorry. React dot uh, lazy. So Within this, uh, I'm going to call the import. And uh, now one more thing we need to uh, uh, note down here is uh, at what name we are going to import. As I said, so the first thing is uh, in your host project under the Webpack config, what name you, are give, uh, you have given in this uh, remotes uh, object. So first I'll take this activities name and add it here and slash. So uh, from the, uh, in the remote webpack configuration, you need to check out the name, how it is exposed. I, I mean, in which under which name it is exposed. So I need to pass this allies name. Sorry. So slash activities. Okay. So now we have access this. Uh, activities uh, component remotely by making use of uh, the lazy uh, function. Uh, 
next i need to uh, add that activities into this container so as i have uh, imported it in the lazy load so here i need to make use of uh, react suspense and let me provide the fallback so it's a good practice uh, to call the i mean uh, to place the activities component i mean whatever uh, you lazy load the co uh, lazy loaded components uh, to be in, uh, added inside the react suspense so i'll just call this constant variable so whatever name i have uh, given here i will uh, access that into this uh, container application so now i just save it it automatically reloads okay Okay, it says uh, module not, uh, I mean, can't resolve activities in host app source. So let's check out what that is. Uh, okay, so let's check out this activities project. remote entries everything is fine okay what's activities remote entry file and Okay, so all right. Let me build and run it again since we have passed in the webpack configuration file. So I think it needs to build again. Okay, it says remote entry.js file not found. Okay, turn JSX. Okay.
give me a minute just a minute Okay, uh, we need to rebuild it. I mean, I just uh, opened and uh, rebuilt both the project. First, the activities project needs to be built, and then I need to build the host app project. So, uh, as I said, uh, only after uh, I mean, I have made changes in the Webpack configuration file, so it needs to be uh, uh, it needs to load the uh, activities page uh, accordingly so that's the reason um, i was not able to access inside the host app so now you can see the activities app uh, displays the content hello from activities page and inside the host app you are able to see the same content so uh, can anybody confirm that uh, you got this output as of now okay so let's uh, continue with uh, how to pass data now we'll see how to pass the data uh, done. so far we have seen how to uh, pass the static code uh, I mean static data. Now we'll see how to um, uh, pass the dynamic data into the application. So I'm going to create one more application. So to maintain the data, uh, I'll open one more PowerShell and create npx create mf app. So I'm going to name this project as data store. Choose application and I'll set the port number to 3000. Uh, just choose the framework React, JavaScript and CSS. And CD data store. And do the uh, usual steps like uh, I install the default packages. So we are making uh, we are going to make use of uh, context uh, React context uh, hooks to um, I mean maintain the global state uh, to communicate between the different micro front end apps. Uh, so let's see how to do that in this data store project. Okay, so now let me remove the default content of app JSX in data store. And I'll just make a note that uh, data store is running. Okay, so let, let's create a file store.jsx inside the src folder so here i'm going to import react and now I'm going to create uh, the context var uh, context variable. So 
for that as i said that we are going to make use of uh, react context so the first step is uh, to create a context variable so i'll define a constant with the name fitness context and i'm using the create context method and pass some uh, uh, text so say for example i just uh, define a local variable here okay i hope uh, i think someone has asked time to catch up so ravina so can um, Okay, so okay, thank you. So I'll continue now. Um, okay, so uh, we are just following the steps uh, as per given in the documentation. Uh, but I think I have uh, skipped uh, the step. I mean, adding tab component to the host application. Uh, that's not a problem. We'll uh, we'll see how to add that uh, in the later uh, part after adding this data store. Okay, so. As of now, uh, we have created. So while designing the UI part, uh, uh, at that later time, we'll see how to add the uh, tab component into the host application. So now continue. We'll just continue with this. So I have created the context variable uh, inside the store. It's nothing but I have added the data store project, and inside the SRC folder, I have created a store.jsx uh, file, and uh, uh, here I am going to uh, create the uh, context uh, variable. So it acts as a common store, global store for this entire application. So I can access data from here uh, within any of the project. Either you can. Uh, um, get the data into your host container as well as into any uh, all your micro front end. So uh, I have uh, created a context variable uh, using the command create context, and here I'm I'm going to pass a string. So I'm just uh, creating a local variable. Welcome to React India, like that. Okay, so I'm just passing this message here and now we need to create uh, the export function fitness provider i'll tell you why we need this Okay, so this fitness provider function, we need it. Uh, uh, you can see the uh, argument as children. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this function into uh, the parent tag. So the parent is nothing but here inside the host application, we have uh, we have the app dot JSX, and uh, uh, this is the uh, container application now so inside this app component uh, of host only we are going to add our uh, activities app and all so uh, we have right now we have seen uh, this thing right so this host uh, app i mean the activities app content <clears throat> is loaded into this host application so uh, if i wrap this parent component uh, inside this particular tag, which you are going to uh, create right now, uh, I mean, this fitness provider, uh, then all the child uh, components, whichever we are uh, placing inside that uh, host application, 
it will be able to access the data directly so you will be don't, don't worry uh, at the uh, at the time uh, you will not be able to understand this but let me complete it and explain how it actually uh, pass the data between uh, host and thing so now let let me create a state variable set message and sorry so i'm great i'm creating a state variable now and i'm passing this message so now my message variable will contain the value welcome to react india and i'm going to return so this is the ma uh, major part here i'm going to create the provider uh, here okay so fitness provider and i'm going to place the children here so you can see uh, within uh, any of the project uh, when we uh, when we wrap any of the parent or uh, in any uh, react components when you wrap up with this fitness provider uh, tag uh, so those children will be able to access the value from here so i'm passing that value attribute and here i'm going to pass this message okay so now uh, here uh, if i wrap up my uh, parent component uh, with fitness context then that particular component will be able to get uh, access this message uh, directly through by making use of this uh, naming okay so now we are done with exporting this but i'll let you know where and how to uh, use it so just uh, you need to define this inside your uh, store.jsx and then i'm going to um, return that use context so let let's make uh, let me create one more export function here and name it as use fitness so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to return the uh, you, uh, return the context variable by making use of the use context so here i need to pass this fitness context variable like this so you'll be able to understand uh, this uh, in a couple of minutes so i hope you are clear with how to create the uh, context uh, hooks so first the context variable needs to be created and then i'm adding the provider uh, fitness context provider so inside this uh, whenever we wrap any of the component with this uh, fitness uh, provider they'll be able to uh, get the access this value and let's see how to access this in into the activities uh, project before that i need to expose this store as i said any of the micro front end application that we create we need to expose it only then the parent can able to access it so i open the webpack configuration of this data store project and inside the exposes object i'm going to expose it in the name store and i provide the source path like this so now my uh, uh, now you can access this with this ally's name so where we are going to access this data store now inside the activities app so i 
let me save this data store uh, and run it first so just uh, you will be able to see that uh, data store is running that's it so we are not going to uh, we are just um, going to run it at the behind but uh, just we are going to access the data uh, from this store.jsx file so all right now moving on to the activities app here i'm going to access the data store uh, remotely so in the webpack configuration of activities app now i uh, inside the remotes array or uh, inside the remotes object of activities app i'm going to pass the data store so because i'm i need data store here so I'll give the name data store. So uh, I hope you remember the uh, name, uh, whatever you need to follow over here, because uh, the unique name that you will be able to see inside that uh, module federation plugin of uh, data store file here. So here, uh, the name is just data store. So no problem. Inside the Webpack configuration, I have given data store colon, sorry, at symbol, HTTP slash localhost. So it is running in the uh, running at the port 3000. So 3000 slash remote entry dot JS. So now you are able to access the data store project inside the activities app. So how to access data uh, for activities now? So now open the app.jsx page inside the activities app. And here I'm going to import the fitness provider. So you just change the path over here. So it, since it's available in the single uh, folder, uh, it is directly accessing it. But uh, when you deploy and run it at, uh, at the runtime, it will not be able to understand the path uh, that generates directly here. So I'll just provide data store slash store. So now uh, this data store is nothing but what I have already, uh, what we have already discussed in the Webpack configuration how we are accessing in the remote uh, object, I need to provide this name as well as inside the data store webpack configuration, I have exposed in the name of store. So inside this uh, app.jsx of activities page, I have imported fitness provider. So this fitness provider is nothing but what we have created inside the store.jsx. So if you if I if you open that data store.jsx, you will be able to see that fitness provider. So now I'm going to uh, uh, wrap this fitness provider inside this. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm going to wrap this activities uh, tag inside this fitness provider. So. Just place this. OK, now uh, I have uh, wrapped this activities component inside the fitness provider. Uh, so now I, I can access uh, the data inside the activities.js file. So I open the activities.js file. And here, uh, what I need to do is I'm going to import Uh, I, I need to return that uh, use context. So we have created a general function inside the store.jsx uh, use fitness, which returns the context uh, variable. So I'm, I'm going to uh, call this use fitness function. So in, in the activities.js file, I import use fitness from, again, here you need to change the data store. Okay, so 
as we have uh, directly wrapped this co activities component inside fitness provider so inside the activities function i can directly access uh, i mean i can destructure that uh, 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 value like you can see const message equal to use fitness okay so this variable is nothing but uh, we have defined inside the store.jsx i mean the state variable which we are uh, passing inside this uh, value attribute so we are accessing this inside the activities.js file so to access that i'm importing the use fitness uh, function from the data store and then i'm destructuring that message uh, and then i can make use of it inside the uh, development now i just remove the uh, static content over here and i just pass this message variable over here and one more thing is we have placed this activities app uh, uh, i mean we have loaded this activities app into the host uh, right now so we also need to uh, wrap that uh, host component inside the fitness provider so just open the app.jsx file of host app project and here also i need to import that so before i import i need to again uh, okay let's see first the uh, whether the activities app uh, okay i again need to build it so let's build and run it separately okay so you know uh, it is not necessary to run the data store again but i just accidentally closed it so let me uh, rerun that and inside the activities app let me try npm start so you are able to see the text that we passed from the data store uh, so this is how uh, we can access the default value from the context uh, uh, so now uh, we uh, we have placed this activities app uh, i mean we have loaded this activities in host app so let's see without doing any changes uh, wh uh, what this activities app displays You can see the activities app uh, doesn't display anything because uh, we have not, uh, I mean, it, it will not be able to uh, resolve that uh, because I have not uh, remotely accessed this data store inside the host application. So I'll open the Webpack configuration of host app and access data store in the remotes object so i'll add comma and Now I need to wrap uh, the app component uh, inside the host app with this uh, with that fitness provider. So I'll open the app.jsx and import fitness provider from data store slash store and
Now I wrap this app component with fitness provider. All right. So I'll explain it again. If you have any doubts, then I'll uh, explain again what are the things we have done so far. Uh, so now I again run the host app application and we'll see whether we are able to get that uh, dynamic data inside the host application so it says can't resolve data store at host app okay let's see what start okay so Uh, give me a minute, just a minute.
okay i think the uh, problem problem might be the uh, we have to make the uh, import in the another file so let me uh, try out that just give me a minute give me a couple of minutes Okay, that's my mistake. Actually, I have uh, set the wrong name here. That's a thing. So I'm sorry. okay so now this is host application so that's a, a thing i didn't note it down so in the webpack configuration i have given the wrong a wrong name typo here so instead of data store i have given as date store that's a problem now you can see uh, the activities app uh, displaying the uh, dynamic data from store and the same has been uh, i mean the that activities uh, uh, is now displaying inside the host container so okay now let me give a recap what we have done so far so i have created a data store project and inside the store uh, src folder i have created a store.jsx uh, file uh, to create the context uh, variable i have created the context variable and then i have added fitness provider uh, function so this is nothing but the provider uh, function so it provides values uh, to the parent component uh, i mean provides values to the component so whichever component is wrapped up with this uh, fitness provider uh, can uh, consume values uh, that are provided uh, to this value property so whatever children is uh, uh, so all the children's children component can access this, this message right now so uh, for uh, we are also returning that use fitness uh, to return that uh, context va value so for that purpose uh, uh, to be uh, i mean to access this data store project we exposed it in its webpack configuration file with the name uh, dot slash store so that's all we have uh, done with this data store project and i'm uh, i'm going to access data uh, i mean both the activities app and host app has to access data from here uh, so for that purpose inside the activities app uh, webpack configuration file i have uh, remotely accessed the data store pro uh, data store uh, uh, project and then inside the um, app.jsx you can see that i have wrapped that activities component inside this fitness provider by importing it from the data store uh, 
uh, so that I can access the value attribute inside this activities component. So if you open this activities.js file, you can access simply access that message uh, data by destructuring it with the constant uh, variable like this and directly use access the dynamic data inside any of your UI elements, uh, UI uh, uh, part. Uh, so this is how we have access uh, data inside the activities project. And in the same way, now the activities app is loaded in data, I mean, host application. So in uh, for the host application to resolve, I mean, to access that data, uh, again, it needs to uh, wrap up the parent component with that for fitness provider. So for that purpose, I have remotely accessed the data store uh, in the host app application as well. And then inside the app.jsx, what I have done is I have uh, wrapped the parent uh, container, which is the uh, which is nothing but the app inside this fitness provider. Uh, so that's it. So now we are able to access the dynamic, uh, we can pass the data, uh, now we can access the data in any of the host application as well as container application. So let me close down all other tabs. <laughs> okay, so uh, I just wanted to confirm uh, with you guys that whether you are able to follow up till uh, this. So yes, uh, Kabil, thank you, and I'll join. I'll continue with the uh, upcoming steps right now. So now we are done with uh, the connecting part. I mean, how to connect with the remote uh, and uh, host is loading the front end applications, and how to access the data in all the applications. Now we'll uh, now we'll directly move on to the UI designing part. So. Our aim is to, uh, I hope uh, now you are able to uh, relate how we are going to design this. So in the host application, uh, we are going to add the tab component now. Uh, so this is nothing but this, uh, my activities, I mean, uh, except this profile, all the UI, this four, four cards, chart, and uh, grid we are going to place in the activities application which we have created right now uh, so you are able to see the grid component and a chart component and these four cards all these three sections we are going to place it inside the activities application and this tab item i mean the host container simply contains the tab component to display this activities diet and fasting uh, thing so now let's uh, start with designing the, uh, I mean, adding tab component into the uh, host application. So we are going to make use of uh, Syncfusion uh, tab component inside the host application. So I'll open the, now let's start uh, to uh, add that uh, component. I open the host tab application. So this is where I'm going to, um add the tab component give me a minute just a minute Okay, so now uh, I'll open the document and uh, show you what uh, what things we need to follow up right now. So I need to add the tab component to the host application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the, uh, I mean, tab components is available in this EJ2 React Navigations package of Syncfusion. So I'm going to install it into the host application. 
and then I'm, I need to refer the C, uh, CDN links for the style reference of tab component inside the index HTML. So let's follow the document alongside. So I, I would like to um, uh, op I mean follow up with the document along with me now. So open the page number six and uh, uh, just have a look at uh, the topic add tab component to host application. So first copy that command npm install at syncfusion slash ej2 uh, react so open the uh, term uh, terminal for host application i'm just uh, with all the projects okay so this is uh, inside the uh, for in the host app i'm going to install EJ2 React Navigations. So this is this package contains the uh, uh, tab component uh, access code. So only when you install it, you will be able to uh, use the tab component. So install this. Next, I'm going to copy this uh, CDN link. This is nothing but it contains the styles of the Syncfusion components necessary for the Syncfusion components. So open the SRC for inside the host application SRC folder. You can find the index HTML. So inside the head section, let just paste it. Now I'll create a tab.js file inside the SRC folder. So I'm going to add my tab component code inside this uh, particular file. So to know about the detailed information on how to work with tab, you can have a look at our documentation page. So inside this tab.js file, which we have created right now, uh, I need to import the tab component uh, and react at the top of the page so just import it so i have imported the tab component from syncfusion ej2 react navigations package uh, by importing it here i can make use of the use of it inside the return function so next inside the tab.js file uh, just uh, copy this entire code so i'll explain you what this actually uh, how it works, I'll explain you shortly after copying this into that file. Okay, so here after the import statement, I just paste that entire code here. So one thing we need to uh, retain over here. Um, So that is nothing but uh, actually um, so just uh, we have just shuffled the topic so that's the reason uh, we need to uh, copy this particular line into the current uh, uh, file so just copy this sixth point i mean the one highlighted in red color const activity is equal to react.lazy and you need to place it inside the tab.js file so inside after the import statement i just copy that uh, activities because uh, inside uh, i am going to place this activities component i mean load this activities component inside the first tab. okay before that let me explain what the what this actually is so here you can see the variable tab header contains the collection of objects 
so uh, this is uh, these are the tab header items so uh, whatever you have seen here inside that application activities diet fasting so i am passing those text inside this collection and i am looping through this particular uh, tab <coughs> excuse me so i am looping through this uh, tab header uh, array and creating a div element uh, by making use of this uh, text so here you can see uh, the item i mean item variable so each item every time the item uh, iterates over it will create a div element so there will be a three div element now and uh, so that that's what this uh, jsx uh, returns and inside the return statement inside the return stat statement of uh, tab function here you can see this is the code for tab component so inside the tab component uh, i have just placed two divs so one div is for displaying the header and the another part is content so uh, you need to provide the class name as e tab header uh, to identify it as the header for tab and for that i'm passing that uh, header uh, jsx element variable so you, here we have created the uh, three header divs so here pass pass that header and to the content uh, div i'm creating three dev elements because for the three headers we are going to provide the content to be placed inside each tab item so now inside the first tab item what i'm going to do is just make a call to the activities okay so now the activities uh, content will get displayed uh, into the first tab item okay okay so one more thing is we have make made use of the created event of tab component and we are going to place a logo icon at the um, uh, we are going to place a logo at the top left uh, corner so i i want you to download the asserts and uh, i mean the indexed css file i'll let you know shorty so here uh, you you can see the on create uh, event handler on created event handler here i have created few uh, a uh, few elements that needs to be appended uh, dynamically so So before proceeding further, I want you to copy the assets folder uh, into this uh, source project so that uh, we, we have some uh, stylings for the uh, outside layout. So for that purpose, I'm going to, uh, I have mentioned in the document at the top section, I, I mean at the initial section, where all these uh, files are available. So you just go to this GitHub location And here I have just uh, posted, uh, I mean, here just uh, exposed the, so download it from here. You just download this data store pro, uh, folder, assets folder, and index.css CSS into your machine right now. And I have it locally already. So I just copy this assets folder. and place it inside the src folder of uh, host app okay and in the same way copy that index.css file so this index.css file uh, i have not splitted the uh, styles for uh, the separate projects so it is the css for uh, designing this uh, entire application all these diet fasting and all so it will have uh, the combined css so i'm not going to focus much on the css part so i'm just copy pasting it into my application uh, 
I mean, I'm just just replace this index.css file with the one from the downloaded uh, location. Okay, now. Let's try running them again and see whether the tab component got placed into the host container. So data store is running. Activities. Okay, so right now I have not. Uh, I need to add this tab component, but uh, I have not changed it. So let me uh, so just open the app JSX file in host app and comment out this activities uh, thing from here and add the tab component uh, over here. Okay, so you need to import this tab from dot slash tab, uh, the tab dot js file, and here I'm just calling that uh, tab, adding the tab tab, and I'm saving it. Okay, so now you'll be able to see uh, the host application. Uh, ha has the tab item of sync uh, i mean tab component of sync fusion and you can see the activities tab item diet tab item and fasting tab item so inside the first tab item we have made a call to the activities project which displays the content welcome to react india and inside the diet uh, tab item we have just uh, placed the uh, plain text so you can have a look at it uh, from here so in the first div content, uh, we have made a call to activities. And in the second div, we have made a call to design. I mean, we just displayed the static uh, content over here uh, and for the third as well. So this is how. Um, uh, so, so now the tab part is over. Now we need to design the next step is to design the activities project. So we are not going to cover the diet and fasting right, uh, right now due to the time constraint. So we'll see how to build the activities uh, UI uh, and then we'll uh, check. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of data we need to pass to the activities uh, project because we'll be making use of the grid uh, chart and four cards. So we'll see. Uh, about uh, how to design that. OK, so now open your uh, open the activities app uh, project uh, activities.js file. So here now we'll start to design the UI for activities project. So just give me a minute. OK, so now again, we'll uh, continue with the steps that I have provided in the documentation. So. I think so far uh, uh, you could able to um, 
follow up with whatever we have uh, done so anybody can uh, reply for that okay. so shall I proceed with the next okay okay now just move on to the page number 12 uh, the topic update activities app so within this activities project as I already said, we are going to make use of the charts component, grids component, and also you. Uh, there are calendars and drop downs. Uh, so if you notice here, you'll be able to see the date picker and then a uh, drop down. So let's see. Uh, so to make use of this, I need to install the uh, those packages as well. So now <clears throat> open the activities uh, project. Uh, I mean, in the terminal, so CD activities app. So in, uh, in, inside this activities app project, I'm going to install all these uh, packages. So first install NPM, uh, I mean, first install Syncfusion slash, slash EJ2 layouts package. So uh, this is the one um, that contains, uh, I mean, for the card to make use of the cards component you need this so install it so once you are done with uh, installation of layouts so start installing the rest of the packages as well i have mentioned in the document uh, for the charts grids as well so next I install uh, EJ2 React Charts. So after that, I'll install Grids. So you no need to worry about uh, how to work with our components. So there are uh, uh, documentation available in the website uh, mentioning about how to work with all these components and how each feature, uh, I mean, each of the features available in the uh, component will work. Uh, so everything you can uh, have a look at from our website, help help.syncfusion.com. Uh, so, as of now, just uh, we'll follow the steps and you can later have a look at the documentation. So now install calendars. And next drop downs. So now once you have installed all these packages, uh, again, the activities project uh, needs the CSS reference to make use of the components, as well as I'm also referring the bootstrap uh, uh, minified file uh, to design the layout. So I'm going to make use of the classes call MD uh, so and so. So for that purpose, I need that uh, bootstrap. So, in your index.html page, just copy this uh, link reference. And place it in the head, head section. Okay, now the same thing uh, which we have followed with the host application, uh, that is, uh, pasting the asserts folder uh, into the src folder i mean just uh, do the same uh, thing for this project as well because we want to ensure this uh, project uh, separately as well uh, 
so that uh, we need to copy these uh, copy this asserts folder into the activities app uh, source folder and also i need to copy this index.css file into activities app source folder you can have your own uh, css at the time of your development but for now uh, i'm just uh, making use of the existing available css file so i uh, so once i uh, you copy all these things into your project now open the activities.js and here we are going to um, return a div uh, with the class name call md so i'm just replacing the content existing content i don't want this existing code so i just uh, sorry you need to uh, replace the dev element within the return statement okay so i forgot with uh, adding data for uh, data that are uh, to be used within this application so before we start to design this activities uh, we need uh, we need uh, to generate data that is to be used so if you have a look at this application uh, how we have maintained data for this these project is uh, for this activities uh, i mean details that are displayed in the cards i have generated the random data and for the chart i have some randomly generated data as well as for this grid workout data i have separate uh, randomly generated data for the demo purpose uh, so i uh, i have so we know uh, we are not going to generate it right now so i have those files uh, i have placed all those files uh, here inside this data store uh, folder uh, all you need to do is just copy uh, copy these files into your uh, now we have some work with data store actually so before we proceed with this activities project uh, let's update the data store first and then we'll come back to the activities project so we should have to uh, make changes in the data store so first uh, copy all those data files so that is available in the data store uh, folder so just uh, copy these files and place it inside the uh, data store uh, source folder src folder So there is a, a topic uh, at the page number 10 update data store so there you can see uh, the code for uh, that we need to uh, update right now so just copy paste that particular uh, uh, code uh, in the mentioned in the second point So just copy paste this entire code and place it inside the uh, store.jsx file. And I'll explain what we are uh, doing in that. So 
so you no need to worry about the existing thing just simply uh, paste that entire content over here so we'll see um, what we are doing here so i hope you are able to follow up with this as uh, so far uh, so do you have any uh, problem as of now so the data store link uh, is shared in the chat so have you all copied the content for the store dot, uh, in the store.jsx file okay so Okay, so uh, are you able to download those files or you can just uh, uh, take that uh, link from the document at the initial section you will be able to see that uh, download assert our library there is a link uh, for data store so just uh, click on that link and you'll be able to see the, those uh, five files Okay, so I hope uh, you, um, you can take it from there and also uh, replace this entire content inside the store.jsx uh, like this. So what, I, what we are doing here is I'm just importing all these uh, data. So if, if you look at this activity data, I'm just generating some random data for the cards and we have chart workout data as well. Uh, diet chart data and journal data we are not going it uh, going to use it in the activities app but we'll need it later uh, while designing the profile and uh, in the grid data there is a um, data generated for uh, a grid component so we are just importing all these uh, inside the store.jsx first and then uh, as we said uh, uh, we are creating the context with the default value by passing the uh, first object of activity values collection so this is nothing but uh, it has the array of uh, activity uh, values so to display in the cards and this is nothing but the uh, actual thing uh, which we have created before fitness provider so we are going uh, we have already wrapped this particular uh, fitness provider uh, for all the uh, for, to the parent component so that the child components will be able to access whatever values that we pass uh, through this uh, value attribute so inside this we have i'm i have changed the state variable over here so if you uh, if you look at here previously we were just sending the simple message uh, string content but now i am passing a object over here so this object actually contains um, so i'm just uh, passing the entire uh, when the uh, application initially loads i want to display the content of the current date so i am i'm just filtering uh, and passing the current date uh, data into this object so this act data is nothing but it uh, it will be uh, it will uh, i mean it contains the data uh, i mean current data uh, whichever uh, records has the date of uh, current one so Thank you. 
Okay. Okay. So you can uh, uh, check all these things uh, to the act data. I have passed the um, I mean last value from the record and to the chart data variable. I'm passing the entire uh, diet chart data and workout chart data and to the grid data variable. Here you can see I have filtered the data as per the um, current date and then returning it. So only uh, it will return those data and also for the profile data variable in the same way I'm passing it. So this fitness data now contains uh, this entire object and I'm uh, you can access it by uh, passing it into the value attribute. So that is what we are, uh, we are doing it inside the store.jsx. So I hope you are able to understand this. I have changed the constant uh, state variable. Uh, I have changed the data to be passed in the state variable, and then um, uh, sending this modified uh, data with the name fitness data. Okay, so now let's uh, move on to the activities project so the data store project is ready uh, and uh, you can keep it in the run uh, you can make it to run uh, at the at the behind so let me start that uh, data store Okay, so there is no problem with the data store. Now let's begin with the designing activities app. So I'll open the uh, act, uh, just uh, go to the uh, topic add cards and the date picker. Now uh, I need to uh, install a file loader here because I'm going to um, uh, display a SVG image in this particular page. So to so that SVG file type is uh, not, uh, it, it cannot uh, handle that file type. So I need to install and add, add it into the module rules. So let me uh, install the file loader into the activities app. So open the activities terminal, activities app terminal and install file loader with the command npm install file loader. And then inside the Webpack configuration file of activities app, just copy paste this into the rules uh, array. So below this um, Babel loader, I'll add this file loader. Uh, next, uh, you need to import uh, all these uh, packages. I mean, you need to, sorry. Uh, okay, first, uh, we are going to import the date picker component as well as the images into the activities.js file. So let me import it. Open the activities.js file and import them. Okay, now let me copy the entire code actually not just the import statement you just uh, copy the entire code that i have provided in the 12th point uh, we'll see uh, what each, uh, each of these code statement uh, will do in the uh, later part so just copy it
you can just uh, replace this entire content inside the activities.js file. So from this 12th point. So what we are doing here is we are just importing the necessary uh, files, uh, I mean, necessary images as well as the date picker component. First, we are going to display only the cards. So this uh, this code is only for displaying the four cards. So we are just designing some layouts uh, with uh, dev elements. And uh, here you can see the code for uh, date picker. Uh, here uh, you can see at the top of the return statement, I have accessed the fitness data from the context by destructuring this variable. So now I can directly access the values by accessing it as fitness data dot ACT data like that. So uh, in this way, to the date picker component, I have passed the value. So from this object, I'm accessing the activity date and passing it to the value property so that it will display the current date into the date picker component. And here you can see uh, uh, e-card is nothing but the uh, Syncfusion card component. So here you can see the single card, uh, how it is being designed. There is a header for a card as well as the... Uh, just a minute. So you can see, um, you can have a look at this because this is nothing but the card with uh, custom designs. Uh, you can see the class name e hyphen card header. Uh, so these are the default uh, class names you need to pass to design the uh, UI as per, uh, as per the layout you want. Uh, and you can refer a documentation for uh, how to uh, use this card component. So inside each of these card, cards component, I have accessed the values like this. So whatever layout you design, you can access the data in this way by uh, enclosing them in the parenthesis, open, uh, open uh, close uh, braces. Uh, with uh, the state variable that we pass from the store dot and uh, in the way how you pass the data from there. So you can see uh, for a card, uh, heart rate uh, heart rate value is passed like this. So so in 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 this in this way we are passing the data. So now let's check how it uh, works. So let me make sure the data store is running. Yes, it's running. So Okay, I have not imported the use fitness in this uh, file. So, And I missed to import the React as well. So I think I, uh, since I have uh, replaced the entire content, so all these elements got missed. So just make sure to import the React as well as uh, I need to import this use fitness uh, uh, function uh, from the data store project. Okay, so now uh, you'll be able to see uh, four cards uh, that are being displayed uh, here for the current date. So I hope you are able to see the changes here. So now next we proceed with uh, designing the chart component and place it uh, below the my um, be below these cards. So just uh, follow the steps with the chart component to design, uh, make use of the chart component 
you need to import all these uh, modules from the EJ2 React Charts package. So I just copy paste them, and uh, copy and paste it into the import section here. Okay, so once I import it, Okay, so we have imported the necessary modules from EJ2 uh, reach, uh, React Charts package and then uh, just create a new file chart props.js inside your uh, SRC folder of activities project and just copy paste these uh, property values into it. So these properties are nothing but the uh, um, properties of chart that you need to pass so like uh, you can have a look at uh, uh, the code i mean how these uh, features work from our documentation i'll just give you an overview uh, shortly so inside the activities uh, project src i'll create chart props.js and in the activities.js file I'll import the chart props first So sorry, first uh, uh, let me open the chart props and paste this entire uh, properties into it. So here you can see uh, I have added the chart area, primary x-axis, primary y-axis. So all these properties you need to uh, pass to the chart control in order to display the data appropriately. So you can have a look at this into the into the documentation, how it uh, actually works. So now in the activities.js file, you need to import the chart props like this and then i'm defining uh, another uh, local variable here uh, to pass it as a data source for the drop down uh, which we are going to create right now so now this is the next section so you just completely copy uh, this code so this contains the chart code. Okay. So after this call MD twelve uh, section. You need to copy paste this entire thing. So, so you can refer uh, how these properties work from our documentation again. So, due to the time constraint, I'm not uh, going to uh, explain each and every properties here. So. In the first div section, we have the cards, and in the second div section, we have placed the chart component. Now, in the third div component, uh, let's see. Uh, let's direct. Firstly, uh, we'll add the grid component, and then together we'll see the output. So, before that, I want you to copy this uh, SVG uh, style into your index.html page. Um, so, this is uh, this this we need. Uh, for customizing the chart series so we are just providing the uh, background uh, gradient for the chart so open the index html and add it after the body section
okay so just add these uh, event handlers uh, that is again the chart customization part uh, so you can add it under before the return statement so i'm just adding this So now to import, I mean, to use the grid, let's first, I'm just importing the grid component. So just now copy this entire uh, grid code. and place it after the chart code. So here we have placed the chart inside the second div. So I'm just adding it after that. So grid code. Uh, so I'll give you an overview uh, right now. So how these uh, um, data actually renders. So before that, let me copy paste the event handler for uh, customized cell of the grid event. Okay, so now we have the, uh, now uh, together we'll see uh, how to uh, filter the data, I mean, as per the change event that takes place in the date picker and drop down. So for that, you need to add a change event to the date pickers and drop down. So inside the, date picker component, I add the change event and in the same way to the drop down component, which is present in the second uh, uh, section, I mean chart section. Drop down change. So uh, one more thing is we need to add the logic. I mean, how to how we are going to, uh, um, I mean, we need to add filter logic in the store.jsx file for when we change the date here, the according data will be uh, loaded in the application. So if you have a look at this, so if I change some other date, the data loads accordingly. So for that purpose, I need to filter and uh, uh, display data accordingly. So just open your store.jsx uh, file and add these two events uh, inside the state. So in, after your profile data, just add that change data, change date and drop down change. And I introduced two variables to handle the filter logic. So just copy paste this change date and uh, uh, one more, I mean, two other uh, functions I have highlighted in the yellow color. So just copy paste that functions into your pro uh, project.
so inside this fitness provider I'm copy pasting uh, these two event handler functions. So now I can access this particular event handler uh, from the data store uh, inside my activities application by calling it inside the uh, activities js like this so here i have defined the change event for drop down uh, and make a call to the event handler on drop down change so So here I have called uh, the those event handlers from the store by making use of this fitness data variable. So this is how you can access the data as well as the event handlers from the, um, uh, I mean, from the uh, micro front end application. So now, so the store is actually uh, running in the terminal so now i run the activities project so here you can see uh, the activities uh, project is displaying four cards uh, charts and uh, at the bottom uh, there is a grid component so actually you need to add uh, another div comp div class name to get the scroller at that part so uh, so all these things i have uh, clearly mentioned in the document uh, uh, so you can follow the step by step uh, things from the document to complete it. So I just enclosing the entire uh, div inside this uh, particular class name because I have written some styles to, um, I mean, uh, to set the height appropriately. So I just so you can see the scroller and uh, there is a grid component at the bottom so now whenever i change the date the data uh, loads accordingly and if i change the mode to weekly uh, it updates uh, i mean it get it filter the data and displays appropriately and so let's check it inside the host application as well how it is getting displayed So inside the activities tab item, now you are able to see this active, uh, <coughs> excuse me. So the micro front end activities project is displayed inside the host application right now.
so we have a very limited time right now so we have so far we have seen how to create a single micro front end application this is activities app and we have loaded this particular application into the host application uh, and placed it into into the first tab item of activities so you might be able to relate how to um, uh, pass data between uh, host and uh, micro front ends now and here i have used the react context uh, to um, manage the state as well as to handle the data between the uh, uh, host and remote applications uh, so now uh, in this way how we have created the activities app you can also create a separate project that is a profile so let me uh, show you the uh, another uh, project that i have with me so i'll show you uh, what things uh, needed to be followed uh, uh, here. So here you can see the profile app. Uh, you can also follow up with the, the, the steps are given in the documentation which I have shared. So create the profile app and in the webpack configuration, uh, I need to expose this uh, profile. So in the SRC folder, I have created a profile.js which contains the entire layout and I have also passed the necessary uh, data here. So if you have a look at this, uh, I have accessed the data store and also uh, I have designed the UI with our uh, Syncfusion components uh, as well for the profile component as well. So in the Webpack configuration, I am exposing this profile uh, component. Uh, I'm going to place this profile component inside the activities project. Okay, so what I'll do uh, is inside the activities app, again, Webpack configuration, I will remotely access this profile by uh, doing like this and then inside the src activities.js You can see at last I have uh, included the profile uh, at the end of this uh, page so uh, here we have placed the, I mean, we have called the micro front end profile into another micro front end. So this is, um, this is how we are placing that uh, micro front end into micro front end. So let me run and show you uh, this, these things. So I just, uh, So let me close all other uh, projects. So we'll just go through uh, what are the things to, to be done and so that you can have a look at the document. Um, I'll open. Uh, we will definitely share those as well. 
So please register with the link that we have provided so that it can be easy for us to get in touch uh, with the entire application team and, and also stand a chance to an app. So that's it from my side. Uh, all that. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Okay, so now here uh, you can see the profile app uh, running. So this is what we have designed in the profile application. Uh, uh, it's fully uh, with uh, uh, designed with cards, a date picker, and a few more cards. So we will load this particular application into the activities project which we have created. So you can see the activities page actually contains this uh, cards chart and grid. And at the right side, I have integrated that, uh, I have loaded that profile project. And now inside the host application, you can see the tab component inside this activities project, uh, sorry, inside the first tab item, uh, the activities project, which again includes that profile is uh, together uh, displayed as a single integrated solution. So this is how the micro front ends work. And now I, I have a uh, um, Angular application. So uh, first of all, I'll run and show you how it communicates with, uh, I have made use of the custom events to handle the data change. So, Okay, so I have given the ng serve command. Uh, in the meantime, I'll show you, okay. So now the Angular app runs at the port uh, lo localhost 4200. Uh, so I have, let me show you the, where I have accessed it. So inside the host application, we have placed a tab component, right? So in that tab.js file, um, move to the bottom section. So here, the first uh, activities tag is nothing but what we have created as a React micro front end. And this diet app is nothing but uh, the Angular uh, micro front end. So this diet app component, uh, I have just placed a simple input uh, component. So inside that, if I move on to the diet page, you can have a look at this simple input box. It displays the value 2491. So here you can see the calories value in this card 2491. Uh, it, it displays over here. So I just passed uh, that value uh, to that uh, variable. And in case if I change the value, in case if I change the date, you can see the value changed as 2560. Now you can not notice the change over here as well. And now if I pass some different data like 399, and if I move on to the activities page, you can see the changes got reflected in this card as well. So just uh, notice that this particular uh, value is updated in uh, uh, September uh, 13. So just so September 13 contains the calorie value three three triple nine. If I change to some other date, you can see uh, I have not bind anything over here, so you no need to worry about this. But you can see that uh, value uh, over there. Just a minute. So I have not, uh, I'm just displaying and getting the data. I have not validated anything in the Angular project. That's the main thing. Uh, so, okay, 2536, you can see the value over here. And I'm just passing the value as four fours. So you can have a look at this for the date 24. Now I move, move on to 31st and I again come back to that you can see the value is maintained uh, for that particular date. And even if I change, I have also written the logic, like if I change the date in this profile project, uh, it actually uh, gets displayed in the angle, I mean, this project as well. So you can see, if I, so that's also, it, it shows how, um, uh, easily you can uh, connect between different, uh, I mean, multi-platform micro front ends uh, 
by making use of uh, uh, custom events and module webpack module federation so i have uh, i will share the code uh, till what whatever uh, we have uh, i mean i have shown you right now in a github repository as uh, as michael said so so that's all about uh, uh, from my side so thank you all for uh, uh, joining and i hope uh, uh, you might be able to at least understand how the how to handle and how to uh, maintain the state between the micro front ends because i i was not able to cover the last part angular application but at uh, so we'll we'll try to uh, i mean uh, if at any cost i can uh, con we can conduct any uh, separate webinar to uh, complete that uh, particular topic we'll try to do and so that's all from my side